Well, the sermon tonight, or the talk, is getting ready for God. It's 2 Corinthians 7 1. Therefore, since we have these promises, St. Paul, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bring holiness to completion in the fear of God. I want to concentrate on the first eight words. Therefore, since we have these promises, says Paul, this is the promises that God has given us. This is a command from Lord God Almighty. Some scripture passages are more about what to believe than how to act. But this one isn't like that. It gives us something very clear to do. It's crystal clear, and you can't get any clearer than crystals. And when God tells us to do something, it's for our own good. I expect we can all remember our parents telling us not to do this or that for our own good. We probably didn't take much notice. <laughs> but like, don't go near the fire or you'll get burned. And I wonder how many times we got burned when he was a kid. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> Don't touch that, it's hot, but we only learn when we got burnt. I told you so, they say. Yes, let's be obedient to God. He knows what is best for us. We have God's word as a manual to lead us through life. Let's read it and believe it. It's for our own good. What promises was Paul on about? Well, God promised to dwell among us and walk with us. Be our God, welcome us, and to be our Father. As it says in 2 Corinthians 6, 16-18, What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? You know, we just we've got to be obedient to God. Well, we are the temple. Yeah, why should we be obedient to God? Well, first, because we're Christians and we love him. And God says, we are the temple of the living God. No, God is in us, born again, born in spirit. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore come out from among them and be separate from them, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing and I will receive you and I will be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord God Almighty. These are the promises God has given us. In other words, one day as Christians, we are going to live together with God as his children and people. These promises are sure and steadfast. But sometimes they seem remote and difficult to connect with. If that's the case, imagine someone important coming over to your house in 15 minutes, say King Charles, for instance. What would you do to, repair, to prepare? You'll probably start to clean up as quick as possible <laughs> and tidy up, maybe over up the rubbish, make yourself presentable in under 15 minutes. I don't know if I could make myself presentable in 15 minutes anyway, <laughs> let alone cleaning up. <laughs> if this is for an earthly king, what should we be like for a heavenly king? Yeah? Our Lord, who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You know, Prince Charles is just a earthly man. It's the same with our God and promises from God. He's going to be with us and he wants us to act on that right now. Now it's time for action to cleanse ourselves. What are we to do with ourselves in the light of God's promises? Let us purify ourselves from the sin that ensnares us, that entangles us, in the world, you know. Hebrews 12, 1. Well, there, since we have great, so great a cloud of witness surrounding us, you know, people looking at us to see, you know, I've got to work. Um, and there's all the brickies and builders and whatever, and, you know, I'll try to get openings and, you know, tell them I'm a Christian and that. And then they... Their eyes are on me, just waiting for me to say a mistake 
do the wrong thing, drop a brick on me, tell them wait for me to swear, and I promise you, I don't do it. But I heard a man one day in his sermon, I was, I was only a very young Christian, a man of months, and he said, <coughs> from the pulpit, his name was Phil, he said, if you hit your finger, he said, don't swear, and I thought, you know what, I've got a big lump hammer. <laughs> but he's right, there's a cloud of witness around us, people watching for us to do the wrong things. Let us lay, lay aside every weight of sin so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that <coughs> lies before us. As before, if someone came to your house, you clean up and make an effort. But with God's promises, though he wants to clean up ourselves up, not with soap and water that will never get rid of our sins. How do we do this then? Here is the answer found in 1 John 1, wow. 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Why? Why does he do this? Because of his great love for us. Yeah? No other reason. No goodness of our own. We haven't got any. We've got no righteousness at all. We can't say we do not sin. If we do, we make God out to be a liar and we rely on our own righteousness. How many times have we spoke to someone? I've heard people say, oh, I'm not a murderer or a rapist. I can remember when I was a teenager, that was a saying in those days, well, I'm not a murderer or a rapist. It was just one of those things. I've never done wrong. I'm not a bad person. I'll be alright. I've got news for you. You won't. <laughs> First, we need to be a Christian. Come to faith in Christ Jesus. Believe Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And when we repent of our sins, repent means to be sorry and turn around our lives and follow Jesus. The Christian life is based on repentance. You know, whenever I come to God to prayer, I always repent of my sinful day because it's just in yeah. us, yeah? Mm -hmm. You know, it's just there. I'm not saying I go out and swear and all sorts of things, but even sometimes if I think, well, oh, well I used to think I had a good day, but, you know, I'm, I'm not righteous. So I need to come to God and repent. And like I said, God will cleanse us from our sins. Mm. Every time we confess our sins, mm. God will forgive us and bless, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Disobedience to God's word. That's what unrighteousness is. We can't do it ourselves. This is God's promise to us. If we expect what Jesus has done on the cross for us, if we accept what Jesus has done on the cross for us, he will live in us by his spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he gives sinful people his spirit in us, you know, he gives it to us. He's not a distant God, you know. <laughs> he says, I would never leave you or forsake you. Really? And that's true. Sometimes, you know, I could say, I'll say to God, you know, why did you put up with me? Why have you haven't left me? Or even worse, how come I'm still alive, you know? God says, I will put my law in your heart and your mind. Yeah? Do you understand what that means? Mm. It's just there, isn't it? We know it. it he's, he's, he's done everything. He's put it in our hearts and our minds. We've done nothing. Nothing at all. God says, I will dwell with you. He's there tonight, yeah? You know, He's just there all the time for us. He's in us. He's right there. And I'm going to be honest now. I probably pray the most hardest when I go out on my motorbike. Because things are so dangerous. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I just know that God is with me. And when I get back, thank you Lord, I'm only one piece. 
it's not so bad in my van, you're not meant to adopt it stuff, are you? <laughs> God says, I will love you, I will forgive your sins. Yeah. I will love you and forgive your sins. It's got this is this is God. It's not us. We're, we're, we're just sinners. You know? God is desperate for his people to return to him. Why? He really loves us. To have that relationship with him, he's done it all so we can have a relationship with him. We've done nothing. Does it say anywhere in the Bible what we've done to earn his forgiveness or nothing? Our righteousness is filthy rags in his eyes. And I don't know, and I don't really want to say, do um, people know that old meaning of what those filthy rags were? I don't know if I should say it, but we are grown ups. Mm. It was rags that women used to use in the old days, yeah? Mm. That's our righteousness. Dirty. God takes all the pain, all the pain, wow. warts and all, so he might prosper. He wants us to prosper, wants to have nice lives, to have new, to have new life, to have forgiveness. To have that opportunity to be, to be what we were created to be. Okay, we had the fall of man, messed up, everything, all gone on, we're born, we're still messing our lives up, but things change around when we become a Christian. Not because of us, because of God. As I said, he's done that again. Do you think it's amazing? Yeah? I think that is outrageous grace. It's really outrageous, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Really outrageous. God loves us so much that he has done it all. This is why the blood of Jesus was shed. When we take communion, God is saying, I have done it all for you, so we can be free. So let us do our part. Let us cleanse ourselves from all deforming things that we I know we can't do, but God play our part by turning our back on certain things and stuff like that, you know. And um, but I just think it is really, really outrageous that God, He loves us. Amen. He's done nothing. <coughs> He has done, he done every single thing for us so we can have that relationship with God. Mm. That's it. Nothing we can do, nothing we've done. God has done it himself. Amen. Thank you very, thank you very much. <laughs>